All right, so how's it going, everyone? Last time on the series videos of Versus, we put up against the oldest team in the NHL against the youngest team in the NHL. And if you guys uh, haven't checked that out, the link's on the screen for that right now. But today, we're going to be doing something different. Actually, it was a comment left on the video right away. So I figured, you know what, you guys, won't, I'm going to give you guys what you want. And uh, it was to do the uh, the shortest players versus the tallest players. So um, basically, just one off the NHL rosters that were in the game as of the latest roster update and built the shortest team the stall team so let's go ahead and look at a short team so like the oldest versus youngest team we went and did the oldest players first and vice versa down uh with the height here we're doing the smallest to the largest of the small guys so uh first line is the shortest line potentially possible and down so this is actually what it looks like so as we get farther down on the lines the team actually gets better but the first two lines kind of suck um, defensively, we're looking like Spurgeon. Uh, not actually, not too bad. Like, really, Warsa, Warsawski is the only really kind of junky defenseman. Everybody else is kind of okay. And then uh, in the net, we have uh, Jonas Enroth and Yaroslav Halak, 5'10 and 5'11. So almost six feet there, but not quite. 5'11 is the tallest, but Halak won't play. Let's go ahead and look at the taller team. So here you have it, the tallest team possible of NHL players. Now, we did run out of uh, actual wingers and centermen that were over 6'5. So I used uh, Brent Burns and Dustin Bufflin as they both have history of playing forward uh, there. So that actually last line is pretty stacked, but uh, Bukestad and Hansel, they're rounding at the center. So the centers are pretty solid, uh, pretty good on honestly everywhere defensively though uh, this team is a really good uh, with the first line being really good and then kind of average through the middle but over 80s everywhere uh, goaltending though Ben Bishop Devin Dubnik absolutely has the advantage um, yeah so there's the, there's the two teams so there you have it, the two teams and what they're looking like offensively it looks like the short guys are gonna have the advantage uh, definitely defensively the bigger guys are gonna have an advantage but uh, it's really close it's gonna come down to goaltending I think and I think the bigger guys are gonna have the advantage so that's what I'm gonna go with big guys are gonna I have my uh they got my vote i guess going into this one i have no way this could go either way whether the big guys or the uh, tiny guys will win so let's go ahead and jump right into the game so here jumping into it just like the first game we're going to be on broadcast we're going to be calling this play by play we're on superstar we're on uh hardcore simulation uh and yeah absolutely picked off and we're off to the races here anthony mantha he is he gonna finish it no and that's gonna be yodis and roth turning it but he gets the wrap around five hole on and roth anthony mantha putting it up a one nothing for the towel guys so the defensive forward line out there now brent burns and dustin bufflin against uh pegu and marchand and that's a goal mike camilleri from brad marchand and we're tied at 1-1 that was pretty quick ben bishop not able to get there and that one's going to be turned over and paul byron up the wing what is he going to do he's stopping throwing on the brakes has pressure coming takes a shot on with the pressure zuccarello is killed behind the net and that is the end of the first period 1-1 for both teams is how the end of the first period is going to look so in every category that you would imagine other than the hits this is a pretty even game. I'm surprised Carolina is winning the faceoffs by almost double, and they're going to hit Zuccarello on the wing there. He's going to try to find the Byron. Byron takes a shot. Big save by Ben Bishop there. Hayes. As one's back to Lesiak, finds his man, and then gets blocked. Bukestad's shot there. And that's a goal there. Blake Wheeler gets it on a little dipsy do out of the corner. 2 1 for the big guys. And Roth out to play it. And picked up by Jared Spurgeon. Jared Spurgeon behind is going to find Cam Atkinson. Lowry picks that one up, and they got the pressure on still. Found, and it's 3 to 1. Dustin Bufflin picks up the rebound in front of the net. There's nothing Enroth, Enroth can do about that. Well, it makes a whole lot of sense as why it was put in. The big guys are not letting up though at all and there you go another goal there you go McCarran actually gonna get this one 4-1 the guys are back up the ice again the size is mattering as they're throwing their body weight around and that one could have easily been 5-1 to one, which would have absolutely been a slaughter there you go shot on and the period and that's gonna do it the big guys score three times to break the score up to four to one and absolutely just put on a performance that period they were all over the tiny guys they're gonna need a miracle to come back that doesn't go through paul byron though he's carrying this one up the wing he's looking for a passing option trying to create some space what is he gonna do he's in the corner dangling with it huge one-timer there but Ben Bishop says he's now carrying it in, looking for an option. He's about to die on the boards there. As he gets lined up. This one's in front. Ben Bishop squeezes it between his legs. Marchand cannot poke it in. And we are still at 4-2 with 5 to go. Wins this one back. Russell with the one-pointer. And this one's Goudreau. He has the chance, but Ben Bishop makes the save. 
and we're still within Keys two. Misses by a little bit there. They're not even picking it up. Kays, and that was a big one-timer, but I believe it went off the post. I'm not 100% sure. Regardless, it didn't go in. We're still within two with a minute and a half Going left to Going to play. McCarran. McCarran looking to get his second of the night. He's going to get it. That's going to be the dagger there, and the bigs are going to take this one five. Two. Zuccarello has it down low. Who's he gonna? What's he gonna do with it? He's still got it. Back to the point. One timer effort, and that's actually gonna go in from the point there. A last ditch effort by Chris Russell to bring it back within two and twenty seconds. Maybe I spoke too soon about this game. The last ditch effort there by the short guys. Team Big is going to walk away with the win in this one, 5-3 final score. That being said, this was actually a lot closer than what I thought it was going to be. Definitely thought the big guys were going to demolish the little guys, but uh, apparently they were able to keep it in there for a little bit. Second period, run away with it. But anyways, here are your three stars. Jamie Alessiak with two assists and seven hits. McCarron has two goals and a hit, and Blake Wheeler with one goal and two hits. Let's go ahead and look at the stats here. Shots are pretty even. Time and attack was almost double. The passing percentage was even. The little guys took one penalty. Faceoffs pretty even as well, but a 5-3 score is going to be your difference maker. So let me know if I missed anybody in the comment section down below below this video and let me know what you'd like to see next i hope you guys are enjoying these videos as i'm enjoying making them for you they're kind of different and i think that's what's cool about them so hopefully you guys enjoyed team big versus team little i will talk to you guys next time